Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, April 14th, 5.55 a.m. Central Time as I speak here. July corn futures up 2.5 cents at 7.80 and a half. December corn up 2.5 at 7.38 and a half last trade. July soybeans up 10 and 3 quarters at 16.75 and 3 quarters. November beans up 7 and a quarter at 15.13. July Chicago wheat up 1 at 11.22 and a quarter. July Kansas City wheat up a half cent at 11.78 and a half. July spring wheat down 2 at 11.57. If you guys are listening on the podcast, as always, appreciate it, guys. Leave me a rating or review. Could use some more on that Apple app in particular. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the channel. My goal is to get to 5,000 subscribers. We're only a couple hundred away as of this morning. If you need some additional assistance from me, go to my website. It is www.standardgrain.com. Check out my premium subscription service. I send my premium subscribers a ton of information uh, direct from me every single business day. My morning email goes out before 6 a.m. Central every day. That email includes all of my grain marketing recommendations, all sorts of charts, graphics, weather info. You'll also get my subscriber-only videos as part of this package. I do a new one every single day. Yesterday, I did a video regarding uh, 2022 and 2023 corn and soybean marketing. I went through everything I've done, what my game plan is. If you are interested in this video, sign up for that premium deal this weekend, guys. It's 50 bucks a month. Cancel it at any time. No other fee, no other obligation. Nobody will try to sell you anything else. Global wheat prices are rising very quickly. Egypt is one of the world's largest wheat importers, and they made a large purchase of mostly French wheat this week in an international tender. They are attempting to increase their shrinking reserves. Egypt state grain buyer bought 350,000 tons. That's about 13 million bushels of wheat. Most of the wheat was priced near $490 per ton, including freight. That's a price that is 44% higher than Egypt's last big purchase in February, and that last purchase was made prior to the invasion. One European trader said this, There is no end in sight to the war in Ukraine and no serious peace talks. Prices are very high, but I think some importers are worried that prices could get even higher. Uh, Egypt's purchases have traditionally kind of been dominated by the Black Sea, Russia, and Ukraine. Russia was actually a small part of this tender. But guys, if you want to talk about a Putin price hike, this is your Putin price hike right here. Uh, International wheat prices, global wheat prices. This is is, uh, absolutely the direct result of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. When you want to talk about inflation here in the United States, I'll talk about the PPI numbers here in a, in a minute. Um, the uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine maybe added fuel to the fire there, but inflation was red hot prior to that invasion. This is the Putin price hike right here, global wheat prices. Uh, in regard to Ukraine, President Biden announced an $800 million uh, aid package for uh, additional U.S. military aid to Ukraine. Uh, the EU has agreed to provide more cash for weapons. Russia continues to warn against Finland and Sweden joining NATO. Putin threatened to move nuclear weapons in and around the Baltic Sea if such a move occurs. The EU told member states that Putin's demands to be paid in rubles for Russian gas imports would violate sanctions. Zelensky says Ukraine needs $7 seven billion per month in immediate financing in order to co- cover social payments and salaries. This situation is ongoing. It's far from over. No end in sight. U.S. ethanol stocks fell sharply last week. Stocks were down 4.3% on the week, 24.8 million barrels. That's the second consecutive weekly decline for ethanol stocks, which are still at their second highest level on record seasonally uh, behind only 2020 when we had the uh, the COVID panic, essentially. Uh, Ethanol production was down uh, eight-tenths of a percentage point last week, 995,000 barrels per day. That's a fairly normal level of ethanol production seasonally. You've got some plant maintenance going on this time of year. Ethanol production margins break even to positive around the Corn Belt. Not too bad. Biden's plan for summer E15 could help to increase corn demand via ethanol in the coming weeks and months if he can get this deal through. It's not going to be a huge amount, but uh, certainly helpful. NOPA will will release uh, soybean Crush data for March tomorrow. Uh, The markets are closed tomorrow, but they will have a report out tomorrow at 11 a.m. Central Time. Traders estimate that NOPA members, who are all U.S. soybean processors, crushed about 182 million bushels of soybeans in March, uh, which would be up sharply from 165 in February and up from 178 in uh, March of last year. That pre-report estimate, if confirmed, would be the largest March crush on record. Uh, The National Oilseed Processors Association, NOPA, they represent 95% of all U.S. soybean processors. USDA projected last week that domestic crush would account for 48% of all demand for soybeans 
soybeans grown in the United States, which is pretty typical. Your demand base for soybeans grown here in the United States, about half exports, half crush, a little bit uh, in the middle. Uh, to get back to the inflation news here, inflation at the wholesale level is record high. The government released monthly producer price index data, PPI data yesterday. Producer prices rose by 1.4% in March. They are up a whopping 11.2% versus the same month last year. That print, 112 uh, is record high, although that data set only goes back to uh, 2010, where your CPI numbers go back much, much further than that. Greater inflation at the wholesale level, of course, is a precursor sometimes to more inflation at the consumer level. Companies pass down their costs uh, to consumers in a lot of cases. The government reported earlier this week that consumer inflation, the CPI, rose by 8.5% in March versus the same month last year. That's the biggest uh, year-over-year increase since 1981. We do have an export sales report from USDA this morning in regard to uh, old crop export sales. Corn should be 850 to 1.7, soybeans 300,000 to 1 million expected, wheat sales 100,000 to 250 expected. Uh, remember, guys, grain markets are closed tomorrow in observance of the Good Friday holiday. We'll reopen Sunday night at 7 o'clock central following a normal close here today. Cattle market was higher yesterday. Um, Cash cattle was kind of a wide range, most of it at 139. There were some as high as 145, but I think uh, 139 caught most of it. Boxes were a little bit lower. U.S. dollars down this morning. The stock market's mixed, uh, pretty quiet. Bonds off just a little bit. Crude oil is down 102 in the June WTI at 102.77. I am out tomorrow. Markets are closed. Happy Easter, guys. Have a nice weekend. I'll be back Monday.